How's it going? Happy Wednesday. I want to uh, welcome you guys to the live stream. We're going to be talking about fuzz today, as you can guess. Um, just FYI, you guys have all seen the Nina D video, right? The one that came out with her doing eruption. Oh, holy cow. It's really good. I actually had a chance to interview her the day before she shot that video. Uh, we were talking about she's going to be part of this Effects on Violence series in a couple weeks. I will air that interview. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to how to cop guitar sounds on your violin. Um, so it's going to be kind of taking all these effects that we've been teaching about and then combining them for uh, for a few uh, opportunities. And she went into quite a bit of detail about how she gets the guitar tones that she gets because the eruption video, obviously, the playing is insane. She absolutely nailed the the tone on that but that's far from the first time she's done something like this she's done rush covers she's done frampton covers she's done uh queen covers there's been a bunch of these uh, she's really good at this by the way <clears throat> so if you have not seen the nina d uh eruption cover it's it's on all the socials you can find it uh nina and then di uh it's ridiculous it's really 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 good uh so yeah, take a few minutes to go watch that. We are week 16 on our Effects on Violin series. I knew the day I had the idea to start this series that when I did fuzz, it was going to be a lot of fun. So I, I wasn't wrong. I've had a lot of fun with this. In this series, this Effects on Violin series, we're hitting a different effect every week. We'll talk about what that effect is, what are all the knobs and buttons and ways that you can use this particular effect. And then we are, most weeks we are talking to a guest artist about how they use that effect in their art, in their music. And this week we are talking to Rob Flax. He is the fuzz master himself. Um, Rob has on his YouTube channel, he has a series called, uh, what, Fuzz Fiddle with Flax. I think it's uh, it's really, really good. And if you are at all interested in fuzz, you should totally watch some of the Fuzz Fiddle with Flax episodes. It's not easy to say. Uh, they're fantastic and fun and funky and fabulous. Whatever. Uh, fuzz is one of those effects that kind of gets lumped in a little bit with overdrive and distortion, and that's fair. Uh, and we will talk about what are some of the differences between these effects. We will get to that. Um, but it's, it, it is a distortion effect. And this is kind of, this is the same slide I used in the distortion discussion. Um, we know what distortion is. It's the intentional clipping of a signal, which generally produces overtones or high frequency artifacts. <coughs> Excuse me. The, um, Imagine, I'm going to use my, my, my old analogy here, that your circuit is like a four-foot diameter pipe. And if you're trying to put a two-foot diameter signal through that pipe, it can pass all the way through that pipe without touching the sides. 
and it's going to just go through just as clean as it came in. If you do a three foot diameter signal, it's going to pass through that pipe without any problems. If you try to put a five foot diameter signal through a four foot diameter pipe, it's not going to fit and you're going to get some scuffing and all that as it passes through. And that is what's called overdriving your signal or clipping. So imagine I've got this big, you know, five foot diameter piece of foam that I'm trying to push through a four foot diameter pipe. That foam's going to get all chewed up and it's going to have some rough edges and all that. That's what happens to your sound as you try to push a signal through a circuit that the circuit is smaller than the signal is, it's going to get clipped. And there are a variety of ways that this clipping can happen. There's soft clipping and hard clipping. Sort of imagine that the entrance to this pipe is, on, is a razor's edge, right? And I'm trying to push through like this five foot diameter piece of styrofoam into a four foot diameter pipe that the front of it is like the edges of it are razors. It is going to cut that styrofoam and, and create completely hard edges on that thing. That's where like fuzz creates these square waves. It just saws the thing right off. And the, the square wave is a bunch of high frequency artifacts. So what happens is the overtones kind of become the dominant sound. The overtones that are created by that hard clipping become the thing that your ear hears even more than the original waveform itself. Okay, Razor Pipe would be a good name for a rock band. It's good to see Rob's here. Jim Moody's here. What's happening, man? So Fuzz was historically the very first effect pedal uh, that was released, or if not the first, very close to the first. Um, and it was basically a happy little accident that uh, it was a channel that had, something had gone dreadfully wrong or dreadfully right, depending on your uh, perspective. And it created a really unique sound. And they were like, wait, that's kind of cool. Uh, not what we were going for, but awfully cool. Let's figure out how that happened and let's bottle that and use it later on. <clears throat> uh, as Rob talks about in this interview that we will get to very quickly because it's nearly an hour long. Um, I just, we talked for a little over an hour and none of it was, none of it could be cut. Like it's fine. It's all fantastic content. You're going to watch all of it and it's incredibly uh, good. Rob's really good at this. Um, fuzz should be used with an amp and a cab or at least a simulator of an amp and a cab. If you don't, just violin, fuzz to PA is not ideal. It's, I mean, it, it, it's got its own sound. <laughs> it's not one that universally is considered pleasing, but uh, you know, whatever. The way these work, remember, it's basically a signal bottleneck. You've got this four foot diameter pipe, I guess, and you're trying to ram something bigger than four feet through that pipe. So if I'm going at four foot one into that pipe, it's going to shave off just a little bit of that signal, but most of it's going to go through and it's, it's sort of what we would call kind of a cleanup of that signal, right? But if I go to like a 10 foot diameter signal, that pipe is going to chew that thing all the heck and it's going to be more and more distorted. So uh, your input volume does have a lot of effect on the output tone, but not so much the output level, right? Because we can't get any, you know, if I'm, if I'm cutting from 10 foot diameter signal to six foot diameter signal, what's coming out is still four feet. It might, it's going to be more chewed up, but it's still only going to be four feet. So it's incredibly uh, high levels of compression or even limiting. So don't expect a lot of output uh, dynamic control. You're pretty much just going to get what you get. You're going to get a ton of sustain on there. Um, so these are just sort of the things that happen when you use fuzz. As far as getting much more detailed about all of these things, Rob does a much better job of explaining this stuff than I could. Uh, if you guys have some time, go find some of these fuzz fiddle with flax episodes. They're on his YouTube channel, Rob flax music. Uh, but for about the next 40, no, 58 minutes. Uh, it's going to be a discussion with Rob and I, and man, this is, this is like, this is masterclass level stuff. You could get a, you get a PhD on fuzz, fuzz with a pH, right? Fuzz, that's dumb. We're just going to listen to this. Recording in progress. Think Don't. about it. That was somebody's job. 
They had to come into a studio and say that. <laughs> We're rolling. <laughs> How you been, man? I have been well. I have been very busy running around like a chicken with my head cut off doing a bajillion different projects, traveling a bunch, working on lots of stuff, uh, living the dream, basically. Life is good. Yeah. Cheers. Like, like during 2020, we learned that the only thing worse than working is not working. That's right. <laughs> Some... This Effects on Violin series has been so much fun to be able to, to just chat with people who are sort of taking effects and doing really cool artistic stuff with those effects. And, uh, and I knew from day one, we we're going to talk about fuzz and I had to get fuzz fiddle with flax in here. <laughs> My pleasure. It is a weird corner of the internet to have suddenly become an authority on this thing, uh, called fuzz for violin. Um, Turns out that's a very low bar to clear. <laughs> Hence the reason I have a job. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, so, the unfair thing was there, there were so many of these weeks that I was like, dude, Rob would be perfect for this. Y you are an authority on a lot of different things. So like, you know, I could have called you for synth. I could have called you for delay. I could have called you for reverb. I could have called you for gain structure. I could have called like any of these things. But I was like, man, we got to do fuzz because that's just, you've done the fuzz fiddle with flax thing. What was it, since you're so good at so many different effects, what was it that made you just drill in on fuzz and do like, I'm just going to make a thing out of this? Well, um, as you know, I like to teach and I really like helping people figure out what it is that they need to get to and my journey into effects pedals was one where fuzz was the weirdest and most exciting thing that took the longest for me to understand and I'm still working on understanding it and knowing that and knowing how many people have gone I don't know about fuzz I don't think that one's for me I wanted to do something to make it more accessible for everybody and at the same time satisfy my own curiosities and desires to find out what this fuzz stuff is all about. So part of it was selfishly just, this is a great excuse for me to learn. And the other part of it was hopefully by the end of this series, <laughs> whenever that is, uh, uh, there'll be a, a, a series of resources available to violinists who wanna get into fuzz and mess around with this very strange effect. So everything looks simple from a mile away. Right, but as you get closer to it, you start realizing things are more complicated than they appear at first. What is it about fuzz that was that for you? Like when you're standing, when you just click the pedal on, okay, it does this thing. As you get deeper into it, what were some of the complicating factors? Ooh, um, okay. So fuzz is historically relevant and it is really frustratingly simple and also kind of dumb or historically, it's been kind of dumb. <laughs> so fuzz is really the first effect that was externally created to be an effect. The first like stomp box pedal was fuzz, the, the maestro uh, fuzz tone, right? And it's actually, there might've been a couple predecessors to that, but the first big effect of fuzz was the thing that we hear on I Can't Get No Satisfaction, right? So from a historical standpoint, as I'm diving into effects and learning about all of electric guitar gear, fuzz is relevant because that's sort of the OG. This is the, this is the first one. So naturally, I want to start there. And it should be really simple. This is an effect that just blows up your sound, but it is, it's the most finicky. It's the most persnickety with regard to things like input and output impedance, uh, the type of pickup that you have going into it, the level of volume that you have going on. Um, and so as I was trying to figure out how effects work, a lot of effects that are designed for guitar sort of behave relatively normally when you plug a violin into them. If you have a reverb pedal, it's probably gonna sound like a reverb. But I've had some fuzz pedals where you plug a guitar in, it sounds awesome, and you plug a violin in, and it sounds horrible. 
completely different responses, completely different reactions. That's a puzzle that I want to solve. You know, if there's something that doesn't make sense and that, I mean, that, that excites me. I want to figure it out. So it's, it's sort of partially that it's from a historical standpoint, fuzz is important and I want to get my head around it. It's an extreme example of gain staging and sort of the easiest to understand when things are going horribly wrong. <laughs> and it's super subjective and finicky and, you know, misbehaving. So it's sort of, there's, there's also a, a joy in sort of taming the beast, I guess. Yeah. Just from a visceral standpoint, what is it about the sound that fuzz makes that, that you dig? Oh, it's rock and roll. <laughs> I mean, I grew up listening to my dad's record collection and Jimi Hendrix and Pink Floyd and Frank Zappa and all of these great rock guitar legends. Um, so for me, the sound of fuzz is the sound of rock and roll. It is the first really like, you know, and it's it, so part of it is that part of it is and I, I've heard you use these terms before that some effects are additive and some effects are transformative. Fuzz is definitely not additive, usually. It is transformative. And one of the things that I have struggled with for many years as a violinist is how to play things like a guitar when my string just goes plink, you know? This is my acoustic violin, and if I pluck a note, it'll ring for a little bit, but it's not the same as a guitar sustain because the scale length is so short. So if I have a fuzz pedal and I'm plugged into a fuzz pedal, here, I'll use this one. That should be, right? Let me uh, hit a fuzz here. Already that's way more sustained than I would have otherwise. That to me is worth the price of admission. Fuzz is a bow for your pizzicato. It gives you sustain, it allows you to play the instrument differently than you could otherwise. And of course, you can get similar effects with stacked overdrive, multiple gain stages into one another, or distortion. Things in the gain family will get you there, but the most extreme examples and the most transformative ones, and usually the hairiest, raunchiest, wildest sounds, come from very strange fuzz pedals. So that excites me. So talking about gain effects, if we're looking at overdrive and distortion and fuzz, and I'm sure you've gotten this question as well as I have, where do you sort of draw? Because it's really more of a continuum, right? It's kind of a spectrum. Where do you draw lines between overdrive and gain and, and distortion and fuzz? <sighs> That's a really good question. Um, the easiest place is if the pedal manufacturer calls it a fuzz, it's a fuzz. <laughs> but there are some that are kind of on the border, things that are distortion fuzz or overdrive distortion fuzz. I like pedals that can go that whole continuum. Um, I did a, a fuzz fiddle episode uh, about a while ago on uh, there's a, a pedal by Caroline Guitar Company called the the Hawaiian Pizza and it's definitely a fuzz um, but you can set it really subtly and it sort of sounds like an overdrive um, I met I met some folks at the NAMM show who gave me this one I haven't really demoed it yet but this fuzz um, is it has on the back it says you can set it for any of those options depending on how you set the dip switches and, you know, I, I don't think there's one answer here. I will say there are some things that are sometimes a fuzz and sometimes not. There are some categories of things that are distinctly and uniquely fuzz, and those are the ones I find most interesting nine times out of 10. If I can get a similar effect with an overdrive pedal, I might just use an overdrive pedal. There are certain things that only fuzz does, and for me, that's, spitty gated velcro sounds and octave up fuzz so things like octavias or uh, green ringers anything that has that octave rectifier circuit 
um, that octave fuzz thing shouldn't be as cool as it is on violin, but it's really cool. And it's one of those transformative things that once I discovered what it could do, I, I'm, I can't go back. <laughs> How many fuzz pedals do you have, or do you have an estimate? Do we have a number? Do we not want to even think about it? <laughs> um, around me right now, let's see, I got this one, I got this one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I put, I put seven more on the floor just in case. Um, this one is technically a fuzz. I haven't really reviewed that yet. There's two more on the pedal board down here there's another one that kind of counts there um and then i don't know if you can see behind me here but there's a stack of unopened boxes most of those are fuzz pedals uh <laughs> i've sort of shot myself in the foot by committing to a series of youtube videos and i really get excited and sometimes do impulse buys i love the thing about effects pedals of they're just cheap enough that if you're if it's late at night and you've made some bad choices you might end up with another one shall we say <laughs> but of course i don't want to open them yet because i want to unbox them and make that part of the video so i have like 10 videos in the can none of which i've edited and my youtube channel is just waiting for me to finish um, i did finally hire a video editor to help me and uh in theory, he's nearly done with the next episode of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax, which features a special guest. Uh, I filmed that one at the NAMM show in 2022, and it's almost done. So I'd say probably we're in the ballpark of three dozen at this point. I, I know I've made 20 episodes of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax that are public, maybe 21 now. and. Um, most of those pedals are still in my possession. Mia Asano, you still have my Russian pickle. I want my Russian pickle back, Mia. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it's somewhere between 30 and 50, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> if you don't count the ones that are overdrive slash fuzz or things that you could kind of turn into a fuzz by using them incorrectly. And this is an important point, right? The first ever recorded example of fuzz wasn't a pedal. It was somebody who plugged into a broken channel of a desk and it was distorting in a way that was so egregiously bad that they went, no, 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 do that again. It's, it's something that started out as an accident and was wrong, but was used on purpose incorrectly. And I have a lot of gain stages here that I could use incorrectly that could potentially constitute a fuzz. If you count those, it's probably over a hundred, but I don't have time to do that math. So <laughs> like they say, every machine is a smoke machine. If you use it wrong enough. <laughs> exactly. Oh goodness. I don't want to think about how many smoke machines are in here, but uh, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So the ones that have made it onto your board and stayed on your board, what is it about those besides the fact that they're blue keeps it on your board? which board <laughs> so yeah yeah that's, that's a, yeah it's a good question <laughs> so for for one pedal board the answer is because it's blue um but uh i have a few blue fuzz pedals because well if if you're not aware if you're tuning in and haven't seen my my blue pedal board um i play in a band called billy wilder and some time ago i had a few favorite pedals that were blue I decided to go down the rabbit hole of seeing how many pedals I could make a pedal board out of that were also blue in color, and now the whole pedal board is blue. And then I made my signature Flaxotron also blue. So really, really saw that all the way through. But in the process of trying out different fuzz pedals, I ended up with a couple of different blue fuzzes. The one that stayed on that board is the Park Fuzz Sound by Earthquaker Devices. It's a really good like all rounder. It's a germanium fuzz. It's a fuzz face style circuit kinda. Uh, it's relatively well behaved. It has a big warm gooey chunky sound that behaves well most of the time. And I keep saying behaves well most of the time because sometimes it doesn't. It's a germanium fuzz and in case you're not aware germanium diodes are temperature sensitive. 
So if the stage is really hot, like if we're playing an outdoor festival, I've had some gigs where I had to take an ice pack and put it on the pedal prior to the show because it was overheating and didn't sound right. <laughs> so that one has stayed on maybe in spite of its misbehaving things because when it does work, it sounds really, really good. Um, it cleans up well also too. So um, we do a song called Farasha and I have very little volume going into it at first. So when I, I hit it, it's kind of clean and then I can roll the volume up and it gets louder. There's at least one pedal in that pile of two unbox that might replace it. We'll see. Um, but for that pedal board, it's really, it sounds really good and works well with the other gain stages on the board is the short answer. For this pedal board here in my studio, I have, I guess you could say one and a half fuzz pedals on here right now. Um, the Benson X Chase Bliss preamp Mark II is an all rounder gain pedal. It has overdrive, it has parametric EQ, and there's a fuzz built in. And that fuzz sounds amazing and it cleans up nice and it has an option to either be gated or not. So it'll do the spitty Velcro thing. It'll do the smooth sustaining thing. Um, it's just really versatile and has a lot of different sounds in it and usually sounds awesome. Uh, the I say one and a half because I mentioned I love the octave rectifier circuit. So I have the Mythos Argonaut which is a tiny little thing that all it does is add the octave up to whatever else you have. Um, I can show you that. Um, here's the sound with just the, the regular fuzz. And now I'm gonna add the Argonaut on top of that. If I just use the Argonaut, you hear this. Like it's kind of this thin and weird floppity thing. Sounds cool with the bow too. If I just played with the bow, you can only hear something's wrong when you play a double stop. It just brings out those tartini tones in an interesting way. So uh, that's what's made it onto this pedal board for now, but I'm, I'm in the midst, as you may recall from our very long sound check, I'm in the midst of redoing my studio setup. And one of the ahas that I had recently was with these little half rack boss units that I found pretty cheap. They're from the late eighties, early nineties. This one down here is a distortion and it has a fuzz setting. And I've been using it with this synthesizer. So one of the ahas I had just two nights ago was, oh, I should set up a send return thing so I can just put anything I want through a fuzz. If it's a drum loop that I recorded previously, maybe a vocal track, some synthesizer, whatever, I wanna be able to have a laboratory to see what happens if I put them through different fuzz pedals. And uh, in that case, I don't have to pick and choose. This, I have a fuzz library here. Of course, my Billy Wilder blue pedal board and my studio laboratory, you know, spaceship monster pedal board, these are both uh, really nice things when I have luxury and space, but probably five out of 10 times I'm performing somewhere using an effects pedal chain. Uh, it's a little fly rig. It's just two pedals, two multi-effects. And as an analog pedal lover, it brings me some sadness to use only two digital things. Um, fuzz in particular is very analog. It's, it's so raw and primitive and finding a digital facsimile of it that has the sort of uncontrollable and wild nature uh, usually doesn't happen. Typically what I find is a multi-effect is kind of a mediocre so-so thing that doesn't have the same visceral reaction. 
Um, but to be quite honest, the Line 6 HX Stomp and the Helix Family effects is pretty decent. It's, it's much better than I expected, and it's much better than any other uh, multi-effect or digital fuzz that I've tried. The Empress Zoya is the other pedal on that chain. It has a fuzz built in, and it's not even close. You know, it's, it's, Zoya's strength is in other departments. It's really good for a lot of things, but it's not really a fuzz specialty. It's thrown in as a flavor. And in general, the reason I love fuzz so much is sort of a, a staunch stance against multi-effects. I don't think that multi-effects are the right choice for everybody. I think they give you 50 shades of meh. <laughs> Because, it, yes, if you don't know what you're looking for starting out, you're going to have a lot of options to choose from, and you might find a cool sound. But that hasn't been my experience. I learned pedals one at a time. I, my first ever pedal was a fuzz. It was a, an Electro Harmonics Big Muff Pie, big chunky thing, and it transformed my sound. I had three knobs. The end. That was enough for me to learn, and it was simple enough that I could figure out what was going on and decide what I wanted. So every time I pick up a new pedal, it's either I quickly understand what's going on, or I can set it aside and go, this one's not for me. Um, fuzz pedals tend to be that way. It's an all or nothing thing. There are a few that really require a lot of messing around. Um, this is the uh, Chase Bliss X Zvex bliss factory uh my my review on this one was you know 45 minutes long because it has a bajillion different options and that's the exception rather than the rule you know most of the time a fuzz pedal is stupid simple because it just makes things explode that's it <laughs> and the rawest most visceral most exciting flavor of that is gonna be at a simple analog device that you can't get it any other way so we'll do a uh, we'll do a multi-part question here because i know you like math you're a mathy guy it's true i have a degree so multi-part question um where do you put fuzz in your signal chain what do you pair it with in order to get uh sort of the the best fuzz sound and and how do you adjust your playing style i know you do a lot of pits with fuzz uh, and a little bit of Arco. So where do you put it? What do you pair with it? And how do you adjust your playing style? Excellent questions. Where do you put it? This one's easy. First, there's almost never an exception to that. Fuzz is almost always the first thing in your chain. Maybe second if you've got a wah or a univibe pedal. And this is going back historically to the great rock guitarists. I'm thinking Jimi Hendrix. I'm thinking Robin Trower. I'm thinking people like that who have uh, fuzz and univibe or fuzz and wah. Those are analog effects that weren't designed well, frankly. So they are very, they want to see your guitar is the thing you'll hear in guitar land. They expect a certain input impedance. And unless you're dealing with a fuzz pedal that has been designed to accept any impedance anywhere, and some of those do exist. I mentioned the Hawaiian Pizza by Caroline Guitar Company. I know there's several others out there that are friendly enough that you could put them later in the chain, but by and large, this is a very transformative sound. You want that first. And some of that is the input impedance. Some of that is just its gain. Usually gain goes at the beginning. If you put it later, it could be weird. And that's true of overdrive too. You usually put your overdrive before the reverb, unless you're into shoegaze. So there's no wrong answers. There's only better questions. I'm, I'm fond of that saying from the guys at That Pedal Show. Tremendous resource, by the way, That Pedal Show on YouTube. I've learned a lot watching those shows over the years. So that's, the, that's part one. Definitely you, 99 times out of 100, you wanna put your fuzz pedal first. Uh, what do I pair it with? Well, whatever you like. Um, if I were, well, let's see here. So here's, here's my, uh, I'm just gonna bring that fuzz sound back in. Yeah. Right now I have 
the following going on. I've got the fuzz and some overdrive because it's sort of a, a fuzz and overdrive combo platter that Benson preamp part two. I've got that going into uh, a pedal by Electronic Audio Experiments called the Model FET. This is an amp in a box. Um, and actually, this is an important thing. Fuzz really needs to hit an amplifier. It can't just go straight in. I mean, you could, but it's going to sound way nastier. Fuzz is assuming you're in a guitar-like ecosystem. It is a guitar effect, first and foremost. We expect it's going to have something to soften the edges a little bit. It is, it's the most extreme distortion sound possible, really. So it's really spiky and nasty and spitty and gross. And you want to have an amp and a cabinet. So right now, this is, again, kind of a new setup for me, and I'm still dialing it in. If I turn off the model FET, if I bypass it, listen to what happens. There's none. Here's some. Also, there's spring reverb going on. Let me take that out as well. It's changing the it's changing the EQ a little bit. It's softening the blow a little bit, right? But that's not as important as the cabinet. I also have a cab sim at the end of this chain. Uh, listen to what happens when I change the cabinet. I'm just gonna cycle through a few different cabinet options and then I'll get to the no cabinet and you'll hear when there's no cabinet. That one also has a lot of reverb which is fun. That's no cabinet. That's awful. That's what Earl calls the angry bees. So probably the most important thing to, to, to point out here is don't go direct fuzz into something too clean. You need something to, to round the edges off and make it much more palatable. That is uh, very aggressive if left to its own devices. Um, okay, playing style. How do I play with a fuzz pedal? Um, like I said, the thing that is most appealing for me about fuzz is the ability to make pizzicato more of a sustaining sound. Oh, actually I should finish first. Other things to pair with fuzz. In addition to the essentials, you gotta have a cab. You really should have some sort of amp or cascading gain stage to go into. Um, in this case I have the overdrive from the Benson preamp counts as one, the model FET counts as one, and then the cab sim. So there's three things afterwards later in the chain that it's smashing into. Hopefully by the end it's more palatable. <laughs> um, but you can also pair it with effects you might like. Uh, reverb and delay, spatial effects. Let me put on some spring reverb and then I'll make a more exaggerated room reverb and maybe a, a washy stereo uh, ambient reverb sound too. Let's see here. Here's the, here's the fuzz back. Put in a little spring reverb. Let's make a big washy ambient sound. Now that might be too much wash, but depends on the context. If I'm playing with the bow, check out what happens. Here's no fuzz. Here's some fuzz. Still going. I haven't muted yet. You gotta mute, right? So if, if pizzicato now has sustain, A mute switch is handy, or if not a mute switch, then a volume knob. 
You can play the volume knob. Check out what happens if I have a little tiny bit of volume. This is just over nothing. Just changing the volume. I clean up the vo I call this the volume knob cleanup trick, right? If I play now with the bow and I'm nearly off, pretty clean. You have all this dynamic range where soft playing gives you a really lovely just came in because he liked the sound of that <laughs> what do you think about fuzz dog oh one other effect you might like to pair with fuzz phaser I think that fuzz is really good if you want to be strumming some rhythm stuff, some power chords. That's the octave up rectifier I just brought in. I'm going to give you two more quickies. In addition to that octave up, sometimes I, I pair it with some chorus. Here's the fuzz into the octave rectifier into a chorus. Check this wobbly goodness. That's 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 good wiggle. It's almost got like a rotary thing going for it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take the RPM. This is another secret sauce. If you like octave up, how about octave down? It's wild. <laughs> Notice one thing about the playing that had to change, right? This is off. It's still getting just enough signal to trigger these analog effects. It's it's off in quotes. It's muted, but there's just enough bleed from the analog circuitry that if you're not careful, it thinks it's still on. Fuzz takes the tiniest sounds and slams them to the ceiling. So you either need to be carefully muting things you don't intend to ring out or just keep playing, which is the other answer. This is, I've got those effects on and just me talking is doing that. 
you can't a live stage this is not going to work you know this is a controlled studio environment and it sounds like it sounds like a horror movie <laughs> so the constant playing right so if you're using fuzz, you basically have to keep playing or there's going to be some and you can use that constructively and let that ring out, you know, sort of a, a Jimi Hendrix drive like Those rakes get more interesting. with a bow. That's so much fun. I, and really, that's the reason I use fuzz so much, is it just makes me smile. It's just fun. Like, reverb is luscious and ethereal and magical. And, uh, you know, phasers wobbly and mystical and psychedelic. This is just fun. <laughs> I could do this all day. <laughs> in fact, I have been. You could put a noise gate in front and, and make a, a big difference there, right? Yes. And in fact, this fuzz has a setting that is exactly that. It has a gated button. If I turn that on, now have a listen. chops the sound off a little bit. And this is what they call a Velcro fuzz, because as it breaks through that gate with a tiny little sound, it sounds like you're tearing a piece of Velcro off. If I use a bow, you can really milk this effect for uh, kind of weird and cool sounds. Hang on, let me just tie my shoelace here. <laughs> right? That's, that's like the, the sound of my wallet opening in the night. Exactly. 19th. Well, that's that's exactly why I ended up buying it, right? <laughs> and in general, there's lots of really cool Velcro fuzzes out there that I think pair especially well with violin. Um, it's another reason I love the octave rectifier circuit. That octave up thing kind of serves as a pseudo gate in ways that it shouldn't, but it does. And that's the thing about fuzz. Like, you just don't know until you try it. You just don't know. Um, other fuzzes, I, me I keep mentioning the Hawaiian pizza. This is a, I have it right here. This one, there's an episode of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax on this one. This one, among many other fuzzes that I have since discovered, just has three knobs. And uh, the input, uh, sorry, not the input, I think it's the pineapple knob, if I remember correctly, controls the voltage to the circuit. So sometimes that gate is literally a noise gate that's doing the regular noise gate thing. Other times it's an old school analog kind of dumb version of a gate where it's starving the circuit of voltage. And that's a different sound than if it's too quiet, make it quiet. This is, please give me some signal, I'm trying, I'm trying. And that sort of struggle has an emotional resonance that I, I find really satisfying. So voltage starving your fuzzes is a whole thing. And I never would have known about that until I fell down this rabbit hole, right? The easy fuzzes, the simple fuzzes, the ones that I started out with, the smooth, creamy, sustained fuzzes, the well-behaved fuzzes, like the big muffs of the world, um, which a lot of times when I meet violinists and they want to get into fuzz, 
they gravitate towards those first, right? If you check out the, the Fuzz Fiddle with Flax episode I did with Mia Asano, she ends up with a muff style fuzz and it's it just does the distortion sustain thing without all of the headache of uh, is the input impedance right or is the gate voltage thing like there's more variables to think about that in my opinion yield more interesting and novel textures but most violinists starting out they just want a big muff they just want it to do the big wall of you know the smashing pumpkins kind of sound it sounds like a rock guitar and you don't have to think about it and it gives you sustain for days the end that's fine that's cool I like the weird stuff more and that's what I'm after. I want those really novel textures that you cannot get any other way. I did want us to talk about the other the thing you were doing it showed like you were rocking the baby before. A lot of people so that so the people know and you've talked about this, guitar players a lot of times the way they control how much dirt they've got <clears throat> is by rolling their volume off and you do it like this on a guitar. That's right. Um, and it doesn't work quite the way. It doesn't look the same way on a violin, but it does work the same way. And it sounded when you did it before, you turned your volume just about off on the violin. Your output volume was pretty much the same because a fuzz pedal is a massive compressor. It's basically a limiter. Yeah. And then when you turned it wide open, it was meatier, but it wasn't any louder. Right. And that's the thing for people to remember because the fuzz is basically a limiter you can back your volume pretty much or all you can put it all the way off in most cases and you're still getting a clean sound through that instrument right yeah um i mean again i keep coming back to to jimi hendrix he would play the whole night with the fuzz pedal on the whole time <laughs> and the only way he cleaned up was just playing the volume knob and if you're strumming guitar style and you have a volume knob like on the Volta here where you can reach it in real time, I worked with Marat to make sure that my, my volume knob was reachable in playing position or in guitar position, right? So just a little bit, right? I'm gonna just, for demonstration purposes, here is all the way up, no fuzz. Here's just above zero. You're hearing the mic, that's it. I might even mute this mic for a sec, just to really drive the point home. Right, so anything you were hearing when it's at this almost all the way off is just, that was, that was coming from the vocal mic. <laughs> if I hit the fuzz, I'm just gonna do that again to demonstrate it, right? I'm gonna turn off this vocal mic so you can't hear my voice. All you're hearing is the electric violin. I will turn on the fuzz and this is zero. You get the idea. It's the volume knob cleanup trick. And there's infinite little worlds of sounds that you can't get with your knob set all the way up. It's, I would argue that that clean tone is sometimes more interesting than not having a fuzz. Like the a, if you AB a fuzz with really good cleanup, usually a fuzz face style circuit, those vintage fuzz faces, assuming you have a violin pickup that impedance plays nicely with it, which is another question, right? That's one we haven't really gotten to yet, but assuming you've got a violin with a well-behaved uh, output impedance that's kind of guitar-like, and you're going into a fuzz that has good cleanup, you might argue that having a little bit of that fuzz and your volume knob almost all the way off could be a more interesting clean tone than no fuzz. That's bananas. 
that's really that that's that's fuzz as an additive effect and then you can quickly transform it just with a tiny adjustment of this knob that that blows my mind i love that you had found the sweet spot earlier where guitar players call that being on the edge of breakup right. where if i play in kind of in my bottom half of my volume range it's clean and as soon as i give it a little pop or a dig we've crossed over to that threshold and, and and that's that's a fun spot to hit because when you dig in a little bit extra you not only get that more sort of a tacky or percussive sound you also get the added benefit of that that fuzz uh you get more harmonic content you get more saturation you get more color it's more overtones um i use this analogy when i'm talking about overdrive and gain staging as well right when we have an acoustic violin most people that I've met who started on acoustic and then started playing electric stuff, initially their reaction to an electric violin is, oh, it sounds so flat and lifeless. They're not used to not creating the harmonic overtones all natural, right? Of an acoustic violin has all this complexity and richness to the wood and the, the sound bouncing around that a pickup going through electricity if you don't do anything to that signal, it might be kind of bland and flat and maybe two dimensional. So the whole gain staging of what kind of amp are you going into? How's it set? Are you using overdrive? Are you doing anything new to introduce additional harmonic content? And if you're not doing that, it's not gonna sound as lively and exciting. Um, overdrive is really a plenty good place to do that or an amp that has tubes that can distort and saturate, and it creates a different kind of richness, you know? Um, so to get those edge of breakup tones, I think that's de rigueur, like the, the 101 thing. If you're playing electric violin, you should start to seek out edge of breakup tones, regardless of whether you're using a fuzz, an overdrive pedal, an amp, an amp simulator. Those edge of breakup tones are in my opinion, essential to making an electric violin on a level playing field with an acoustic instrument. Even for clean tones, you know, it's, it, it doesn't actually have to be clean. It can have some richness and some overtones that are being added in on top. Double stops get weird, <laughs> but that's okay. I, I like that sound, yeah. They get weird on acoustics too. And if, if you listen for them, you have to listen a little harder for those tartini tones and, and uh, difference tones and all that. With, with distortion or a little bit of gain, they pop out a whole lot more. Those undertones and tartini tones come through, but they're happening on acoustics too. The body just can't reproduce them the same way. Exactly, yeah. So the way that we're used to hearing them is as a more subtle thing that we don't have a name for what's happening. We just go, oh, it's rich and interesting. And then when you plug it into a pickup, that's plugged into an amp with no headroom that can't reproduce the same thing you're hearing, you go, eh, that's distorting in a way that's not natural. None of it's natural. It's electricity. It doesn't matter. It's fine if it's unnatural. Does it sound cool? <laughs> if it sounds good, it is good. That's so saith Duke Ellington. So that's, that's how I feel about that. Yeah. Now, the last question I want to have for you is you sort you sort of, previewed this a second ago and in its impedance right and we know that guitars and violins have vastly different impedances so you've got a, a say a passive violin that's between one five or ten mega ohms of impedance and a guitar that's in the the, the more kilo ohm range what has been your discovery on how violins act differently with uh with fuzz pedals than guitars short answer is Tone benders are usually not your friend. <laughs> um, as with many types of effects, there's historically been families of those pedals. So if you go through the history of fuzz, you start out with the maestro fuzz tone. Nobody likes the maestro fuzz tone. It was just there first. The first really big popular one was the big smiley face, the Dallas Arbiter fuzz face. That's the one that Jimi Hendrix used. And in my experience with this violin and also with the pickup that I have, on my acoustic, this is a Schertler Stat V pickup. It has a built-in preamp. Those tend to be pretty well behaved um, with with a fuzz face, um, and they they play nice. Big muffs, 
usually fine. They behave pretty well almost no matter what. Um, and I think that's because of the design. Uh, fuzz faces were two transistors in series. Big Muff has four, I think. Maybe it's three. I forget how many more, but there's there's sort of an extra cushioning of the blow. I'm not sure why a tone bender is so violently can of bees sounding to me, but that ten that was my experience. I was at a, a used uh, gear shop in Seattle um, pre-pandemic, and I was trying some fancy old vintage fuzz pedals. I was very excited to find out, ooh, they've got an Italian Vox tone bender from the 60s. It was like $600 or something. It's really vintage, limited, rare, fancy thing. I plugged in, and it was the harshest, shrillest, most discomforting sound I had ever heard. And I went, nope, I just saved a lot of money. But when you hear a guitar play that, particularly in the low register, think about what that's doing for the low notes. It's adding a lot of sizzle and harmonic content to otherwise kind of bland low tones. Violin already has a lot more rich upper harmonic content. So you kind of, it was sort of stacking two on top of itself. And in general, if you're playing guitar, you might need more top end and more interest happening. They're just not as exciting as violins, what can I say? Um, but you can go too far in the opposite direction there too. So um, some of that has to do with impedance. And I still don't thoroughly understand impedance as much as I've been messing with it for a while. I know that my Volta has good impedance that's that's as much as i know i don't i haven't actually measured what the official output impedance is but one thing that was mind-blowing to me was when i was trying out this fuzz factory circuit this one the, the zvex fuzz factory is notoriously the like the most insane bonkers version of a fuzz you can ever find and this this switch on here that i was using earlier is actually a passive active toggle. It determines whether or not the output signal to the quarter inch jack is the passive piezo only or the active output, which includes, it's also powering the speakers and the built-in delay. I'm gonna, you know, I'm curious to hear. Check this out. The volume cleanup trick doesn't work with the active in the same way. Uh, here's how I'm gonna demo this. I'm gonna turn on the fuzz I'm gonna turn off the room mic so all you'll hear is the output from here. You're not gonna hear the speakers from the instrument, just the output jack. And I'll switch between passive and active with the volume knob all the way up and with the volume knob almost all the way off, that edge of breakup clean tone. And watch what happens. This is insane. You heard what happened there, right? As soon as I switched to the active circuit, it's trying really hard to push a lot more signal. And that's partially impedance, but it's partially just, you know, signal strength. And uh, it means that I can't do the volume cleanup trick anymore. So the impedance thing, so people understand, it's only a thing if the very first, if it's violin, cable, fuzz. Right. If you're plugged into a preamp or a buffered volume pedal or something, then all bets are off and all that changes. Yeah. Impedance, it's got to be the, the fuzz pedal. Literally, it's seeing the violin directly connected with no other electronics in between. Right. As you said, every device in your signal chain has an input and output impedance. So if the fuzz is second or third, you won't be able to use those volume cleanup tricks because it sees a constant impedance coming from your compressor or your buffer or your tuner or whatever else and that limits the options you have there are some companies that make little um input buffers that have a a loop in them i'm thinking of the uh the 29 pedals uh yuna 
uh, which is it's a, it's a really good sounding input buffer, but there's a true bypass loop in it in case you want to have a fuzz, so the fuzz and the buffer never interact, and that's a pretty good solution. Um, the other reason that I really like the HX Stomp is it has a variable input impedance, and it does a really good job of modeling the misbehavior of impedance. Um, even the blocks that you have in its digital virtual world have fake impedance, where if you change the order of your signal path inside the pedal, they sound different and behave differently. And that to me is enough for me to go, okay, this particular modeler is doing a good enough job of getting the weird abnormalities and ambiguities of the, uh, you know, analog world that I'll use it for fly dates. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, impedance is a really important thing. It's hard to figure out exactly what's going to work and what's not. I will say that I only figured out that this active passive toggle had such a dramatic change by trying it. And uh, I mean, I think we showed earlier how much the cabinet simulator made a difference, but all of the gain stages matter. If you go in my Fuzz Fiddle with Flax series to, I think it was the Analog Man Astro Tone. I did a, a one of my early episodes. The, the video quality is not great, but the, the pedals are really good. Um, I compared what happens if you plug the Astro Tone into an overdrive or a boost. And when you had either of those on, it dramatically changed the sound. It was really, really different. So. The thing you're plugging into and the thing that that's plugged into and the whole chain makes a big difference. It makes some difference with other effects, but fuzz is the most exaggerated version of this possible. <laughs> Man, it is always a pleasure hanging out with you. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, tell people where they can find you and your music. Where can they see you play? All that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Well, you can find all things Rob Flax at robflax.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram at robflax. I'm on Patreon at robflax. I'm on YouTube, robflax music and uh, Spotify and Facebook also exist, but that's not so exciting all the time. Um, in terms of musical things that are happening, if you want to hear me playing fuzz and using electric effects, I do that most with the rock band Billy Wilder. That's Billy and then Wilder with a Y, W, Y, L, D, E, R. Um, I'm also playing a lot more acoustic singer songwriter folk stuff with my Boom Chick trio. Got new Boom Chick shirts, by the way, which is very exciting. And uh, later this year, I think it's, uh, we're 99% confirmed, so I think I can announce this now. Um, Memorial Day weekend, the 25th, I will be playing this and those. Um, this is a smart chessboard. This is my chessboard drum machine project. I got a chessboard that makes music. And uh, Memorial Day weekend, I'm going to be doing a simul concert uh, here in the, out the suburbs of Boston where I'll be playing up to 20 games of chess at the same time while improvising music with my violin and the chessboard drum machine. So hopefully that doesn't crash and burn. But if you want to follow my chess music adventures, you can find that at robflax.com slash chess music. Because that's a thing, I guess. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Much appreciated. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, share a frosty beverage again real soon. Would love that. Huge fan of milkshakes. Awesome. Yep. Milkshakes it is uh, very soon. Thank you guys for hanging out for all this. Uh, that was week, uh, what I say, 16 in this Effects on Violin series. We've got a couple more to go. Uh, probably this coming week. I see Chuck Bontrager is here. Uh, I think the plan is for this coming Wednesday, Chuck is actually going to be here in the shop. He is uh, on tour with Moulin Rouge right now, the theatrical production, and they are in North Carolina again for a few weeks. <clears throat> so I think the plan is for Chuck to be here and week 17 is not going to be an effect so much as it's going to be the use of a bunch of effects to achieve a goal and that goal is how to simulate a string section with one violin. You can use your one singular instrument to sound like a string section or an orchestra. And uh, Chuck has got a brilliant implementation of a number of effects to achieve that goal. So string section simulation is going to be uh, this coming week. And then the following week 
is going to, we're going to have Nina D. She's going to be talking about how to get guitar tones with your violin. That's another one of those where we're going to use a number of effects to achieve a certain goal. And then uh, we're going to have, uh, we've got planned to have Martha Mook talk about Eventides. Uh, I'm hoping to get Raz in here to talk about physical amplifiers. And then I'll probably Tracy Silverman talking about um, choruses and flangers and phasers and all those kind of things. So we got a, uh, we got a huge uh, lineup of people coming yet. Some big stars are going to be in here. Super excited about that. And uh, that's the plan for what's coming up. So we're going to hear from Chuck. We're going to hear from Nina. We're going to hear from Martha. We're going to hear from Raz. We're going to hear from Tracy Silverman. A bunch of heavy hitters. So excited about finishing this series strong. And uh, yeah, Evan Tide. Good job, Evan Pitson. Uh, yeah, Evan Tide is sort of its even tide, Evan Tide, even tide. It's sort of its own thing. I don't really even know what to call that pedal. It's, you know, they call it a harmonizer, but it's way more than that. So uh, yeah, and I don't know of anybody who's doing more creative stuff and has been doing more creative stuff than Grammy winner Martha Mook. So we're going to. We're going to hear from her. Uh, Rob, thank you for doing this, man. You, you're a great teacher, and you made my week very easy. I just made a couple slides and got out of your way. So awesome, everybody. Looking forward to the next couple weeks, and uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs>